wisdom that's um, very helpful and um, speaks to the power of the tradition behind, you know, you know what, what you're establishing. And mm -hmm. on a less traditional note, um, I'm curious about, you know, because there are certain points of friction between modern understandings and Buddhist understandings of, you know, the path towards um, well-being. And one that's come up recently in the West that I'm, I don't quite know how to interact with is that among psychedelic therapy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm aware of the research from John Hopkins and NYU, and it seems pretty impressive. Um, at the same time, um, it, you know, in terms of quitting smoking, reducing fear of death, um, at the same time, it seems very clearly a breach of the fifth precept. And um, I also know that some elements of it have been lived through in the 60s already. So I'm curious how, what your thoughts on that whole realm are as a whole, how do we interact with it in a wholesome way as practitioners and as monastics? Yeah, I would say that if they decide that they're going to actually invest a considerable portion of their life in the practice, that they don't need psychedelics or all of these sort of other expedients, that you, you won't, you'll, you'll get a much better effect, but you'll have to work at it. And secondly, that what seem, may, may seem a very dramatic uh, effects from psychedelics are, are not as deep or long lasting or at your disposal as true continuous practice. So the psychedelic thing is that like, most people will not do an intensive course, an Upasaka course. They won't go to a monastery and spend hours and weeks and months meditating. So they're left with, uh, uh, you know, ter a kind of a terrible state of being that they're trying to address through psychedelics or just smoking a little bit of dope, you know, and just kind of get through it, you know. And these are two different levels of the game, and they shouldn't confuse them. One is, one is a kind of a a medicine that just treats your symptoms and might make your life a little bit better. The other one is truly a deep and lifetime practice which uh, utterly transforms you over but over a period of time sometimes decades sometimes a whole lifetime um and so they're not really comparable and when people who if you don't have a long-term spiritual practice and you have had a some a little breakthrough with lsd you might say oh yeah but i got it quick you know but how do you know <laughs> we you will have maybe you come to the monastery or spend some time in northeast thailand in a monastery doing all night sits and so forth and you might find that your lsd thing is not as deep as you thought it was um i remember a story about a, a monk who visited i was at wat nana chat the international forest monastery in north northeast thailand where where all of us have have some roots and it's a very austere and demanding place. It is, it would be illegal in, in, in any other, in the West. <laughs> so it's, it's an utter, utter commitment. And uh, so this, this monk uh, was practicing in Thailand and he, but he wasn't from Nana Chat. He showed up as sometimes visiting monks do. And you get some characters in the robes and this this fellow had been born in uh, I think Argentina but of Dutch parents and so forth and he was off roaming around the world he said I've been searching around the world and I was a hippie I did everything and uh and I I uh I did a whole bunch of LSD and I thought I was enlightened and I was living in this community and this is before he's a monk so he's a, a seeker a searcher uh you know trying this and trying that the everything, the Sufi dancing and the this and the that and the drumming and so he, he he had this revelation on on his on LSD and he said, you know, I'm enlightened. And then he was living in a commune, sort of a hippie commune. Finally this guy shows up who is just rubs everybody the wrong way, is just intolerable. 
And one day after a number of encounters, this is the monk telling me this story. He said, one day I, I grabbed him by the collar and I was about to beat his head in. And I realized I'm not enlightened. <laughs> and he, he let go of the, he let go of this guy and said, thank you very much. <laughs> the guy didn't know why he was saying it, but he said, the, what I was, I realized I'm not enlightened. <laughs> so then he found his way to the, to the robes. <clears throat> and uh, uh, then you, you start to see, you know, under all these circumstances, a, a, a moment of, of, of breakthroughs is not enough. It's what follows these things. Is it deep? Is it genuine? 